You can probably hear me better now on YouTube. I've turned the microphone on, so that's good. Um, welcome. Uh, so we are on the 6th of May. This is a live stream Thursday tea time live from, um, from me, Philippa. And we'll talk about history chat. I'm live streaming on YouTube and uh, Facebook. And also, if you're on catch up, you'll be seeing this or you might be listening to this, should I say, on the podcast as well. So welcome, everybody. It's lovely to have you here again. I don't know what uh, number we're on now. It's uh, it's quite a few now, which is fabulous. So um, I'll keep an eye on the chat. And uh, so please feel free to give me a like, thumbs up or say hi in the chat. It would be lovely to hear um, hear from you. It would also let me know that my chat is working because um, it looks a little bit different today to what it normally does to me. So um, I'm a bit concerned I've written, uh, sorry, written, <laughs> because I've pressed a wrong button at some point. But anyway, yeah. So if you want to say hi, please do. Um, if it, I think... Um, if you if you click um obviously like and thumbs up and stuff like that, it's fab for the video. Um and commenting, I think, over and above everything else does the video a uh, power of good and uh, makes it more visible to other people. You know, when um YouTube or Facebook suggests things to you, I think it's comments, it's that show of engagement that uh, shows the platforms that that uh, it might be something worth um showing to somebody else. So I uh Please, if you feel like you would like to, please do comment. Those of you who are on YouTube, you can leave me a super chat or a super sticker, which is quite funky. You'll see I've put a um, a, a comment at the top and one of the, um, sorry, I'm those on Facebook, but I'll try and describe it. There's a custom emoji. So basically you can join my YouTube channel for 99p and you get a badge next to your name, um, which are all Elizabeth the first base, because you'll know I'm a, I'm a huge, that's that's how I go into history, um, was uh, learning about Elizabeth. Um, and uh, and you can, um, sorry, so you get a badge and you can also use these custom emojis, which I've put together, which are of course based on a teacup because of Thursday Tea Time Live. So tea time as in have a cup of tea with me. Let's have a history chat. Um, we actually, um, I've had this conversation about what is tea um, so many times because in England, and it depends which um, part of the country as well. And I'm, I am saying England because I'm not sure if it's used in um, in Scotland or Ireland. Um, but if you're sort of middle of the country uh, to the north, you might say it's tea time as opposed to dinner time, um, which basically means it's our, we wouldn't say, we would say tea time. Uh, hi, Barbara. Thank you for joining. I changed the time from three o'clock to one o'clock. Um, so um, the last few weeks, Barbara's missed it. So thank you for making it, Barbara. Um yeah, so we'd say tea time. I don't know, Barbara, you're um, you're uh, in the north of England. So tea time for me would be like dinner time, but it's a light dinner. So it's your evening, it's your evening meal. And of course, in 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 this country, we've got high tea, cream teas, um, and all sorts of things like that as well. Champagne teas now, and if you've got you know nowhere to go afterwards. So anyway, thank you for joining me for tea time. Um, and like I say, hit the hit the like button, please do comment. Um, let me know you're there <laughs> and say hi. Um, throw questions at me, whatever it is you would like to do today. So um, I hope you're settled in. You've got a suitable beverage. Um, did I end up did I actually finish talking about the custom emojis on YouTube? I think I did. Basically, you can join me on my YouTube for 99p a month and you get these custom emojis and you get a badge by your name. Hi, Judy, as well. Um, can you see in the background? So Judy, I'll go and get them in a minute, actually, um, sent me these last week. Uh, <laughs> Barbara, whatever, breakfast, dinner, tea, supper. All these names we use for the different meals. We're obsessed with food. Um, yeah, so so Jude, Jude made these. Oh, I'm pointing. No, that's Facebook. 
that's YouTube. Sorry for everyone on YouTube. I was just totally pointing to the wall instead. Um, these uh, mice. And there's Elizabeth I in the blue dress with a big ruff around her neck. And and Anne Boleyn next to her. Um, so, And you can get those from Judy. She makes them. You can find her on Facebook at Greenpool Crafts. And, um, and you can buy these. And the proceeds go towards the... Um, the, the, the hospice where Judy uh, Judy's son unfortunately uh, died but they were they were fabulous um, um, caring for him and so Judy does a lot to to raise money for their amazing cause so you can get one of these and help a good cause which everyone's a winner so green poor crafts go and have a look uh, at, look at Judy um, on Facebook so um what have I got to tell you about this week? So I normally give you a little bit of an update as to what we've been covering on Clubhouse because some of you I know already can't get on. Um, a lot of you, I'm happy to say, I do see on there. So thank you for joining us uh, on Clubhouse. The news on the Android app. Um, oh, Jude says you can have any colour. So these dresses, you've got Elizabeth in blue, for those listening on the podcast, and Anne is in a green with um, like a, a gold underskirt and, and has a hood but Jude will do you in any colour dress you like. Good to know. I might have a lineup of them <laughs> over the next few weeks, Jude. Get get you get your get your sewing stuff out. Um, yeah. So Clubhouse news on the Android app for Clubhouse is yes, they're testing it. So some Android users have it um, because they're basically making sure it works before they go for the full on rollout. Because I think that. I don't know, read them between the lines, maybe that's the last step for it being um, kind of by invite only to being opened up. I'm not sure. There you go. Yep, Jude's going to, yep, Jude can do all six wives. But I've got Elizabeth now, so you've got to do the children as well. <laughs> Is there an Edward mouse? A little boy mouse. So anyway, so what have we, we covered on Clubhouse? Well, last week we did, um, we talked about, Right. This is this is funny. I think it's funny. We've talked about Thomas Cromwell. And the reason we decided to talk about Thomas Cromwell is we're obviously uh, in, oh, I say obviously, I spoke about it last week, we're in the run up to Anne Boleyn's execution, which I'll come back to um, talk about in a bit as well. And Thomas Cromwell obviously featured um, uh, in obviously hugely in that uh, story. He was he was um, very much behind the machinery of that happening. Um, and so we decided to set up a room about him, all thinking that we'd all go in and uh, slate him, really, uh, and find all the things that we uh, really didn't like, don't like about uh, Thomas Cromwell, chief minister to Henry VIII. For those of you who don't know, the man who was um, politely termed, although accurately termed, a, a ruthless administrator. If you would want him on your team, let's put it that way. If you wanted something done, this man could get it done. Um, and um, anyway, it turned out we all <laughs> went in and it almost not 100%, almost turned into a Thomas Cromwell Appreciation Society. I don't know if any of you are on here now, we're, we're in that room. Um, morning, David, thank you for joining. Hi, Sharon. Um, and uh, sorry, people, I've missed the, the comments go up and, and, and off my uh, off my screen if I miss uh, quickly. So um, I will try and notice everything. Um, but uh, so, yeah, it turned into a little bit of a Thomas Cromwell Appreciation Society. <laughs> now, um, that was because his life is extremely varied and interesting. I mean, he did a lot. He packed in a lot of stuff. I mean, this man was... Um, he had an awful childhood, um, raised by an abusive uh, father, but incredibly intelligent. And the natural intelligence of him is uh, was is an indisputable. So he rose out of that by on pure merit, um, and uh, yeah, like him or not, very clever. Um, went through incredible tragedies himself, as anyone who's read or watched Wolf Hall, um, that scene where, um, where don't want to be a spoiler alert, but it's been out for a few years now, so um, it, where his, his, his daughters and his wife just, just don't wake up in the morning. They, and, and, um, and 
uh, it's just incredibly tragic. Um, but yeah, so so that room was really interesting because it didn't turn into a big hate fest for Thomas. It was a little bit of a an appreciation for his um, his struggles, his merits, his intelligence. Um, and of course, he he got his uh, comeuppance in the end as well, if you look at it that way. And then on Sunday, oh, I'll just mention though as well, because um, Dermot McCulloch wrote a, a, a biography of Thomas Cromwell. I don't know if, if any of you have ever seen it. This is one of the ones where it's on my Audible because I would never pick it up because it's it, you could use it as a, a doorstop. So um, So it's on my Audible so that I don't know how big it is and it doesn't put me off incredibly detailed though as well I think I've remembered way more than sorry I've forgotten way more than than I remember but you know that's just the way it is with these amazing books um uh, and Sarah Morris the Tudor travel guide who um who I'm on Clubhouse with is interviewing Dermot McCulloch um I'm not exactly sure when but if you follow Sarah look out for that um that interview welcome Angela thank you for joining so um Yes, so look out for that if you're interested in Thomas Cromwell. Um, Sarah's, Sarah's got to read the book because she's interviewing Dermot. <laughs> mm. I have my tea. I was quite organised today. I say that. You didn't see me two seconds before I went live. Sunday, we have got a new room. We've done it a couple of weeks now called the um, Tudor... What do we call it? Travelling Tudor Britain. Um, and it's in the Tudor Travel Club on Clubhouse and we it's me Sarah Morris and a lady called Deb Royal um who's behind Tudor Times and we 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 pick a place each week and talk about why a Tudor enthusiast someone interested in Tudor history would like to go and and why why sh you should go and visit what there is to see when you get there the history of the place um and last week um on Sunday we did Greenwich now um some of you will know that Greenwich Palace was, um, well, it was the, the birthplace of Henry, Elizabeth, Mary. Um, Edward VI died there. Anne Boleyn was arrested there, which is why we chose to do it last Sunday. Uh, welcome, Gary. Thank you for joining. And um, so we chose to, to cover Greenwich Palace because it was it was big in Anne's story. But it was a favourite palace of of the Tudors, Henry the Seventh had really built it up. Um, there'd been one there before, but Henry the Seventh really built it up because it's it's it like today on the river, and you can be in um, the city of London on the opposite side. You can be down in Westminster um, really quickly. So, but it's in but it's in the countryside. It even does have um, that Greenwich does have that village feel now, even though. You, know, you look over the river and it's Canary Wharf, which is the financial district. So it's just huge skyscrapers and whatnot. Um, but it does have that feel. So you can imagine in Tudor times as well, when none of that was there, um, and it was surrounded by hunting chases and 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 the like, that um, that it was a very pleasant place to be. And so the Tudors really favoured this palace. So um, hence why it was the birthplace of. Hi, Louise. Thank you for joining. Um, why it was, um, yeah, birthplace of, of Henry and, and um, Elizabeth and Mary, why Anne was there when she got arrested. Edward VI had um, gone there to try and recover. Um, obviously, he died there. Um, now, there isn't a fat lot left of it to see. <laughs> when I say there isn't much, uh, or fat lot is what I meant, um, is, uh, I meant much, um, then you think, well, why bother going? But, of course, you're in that space of all these really incredible um uh, and pivotal events but I would definitely recommend going by boat or um or or going back into London by boat D doing that Thames journey anyway at some point um just to get a feel a little bit more of a feel what it would have been like to travel around as Anne or Edward or Henry um or Elizabeth indeed in uh, in Tudor times up and down the river um the visitor centre there is very good. So you can get a really good idea of what Greenwich Palace looked like. Um, they've, done, they've done excavations there, which are now, um, I think when, you, when they do ar archaeological digs, they're generally filled back in, obviously, because that's the best way of then preserving everything. So everything is logged, photographed, um, drawn, whatever it is that they need to do. 
Uh, welcome, Neha. And um, uh, and all of the that information is in the visitor centre. You, so you can see what Greenwich Palace would have would have looked like in Tudor times. Um, anyone who's been or knows of the Royal Observatory on the top of the hill behind will notice that it looks quite Tudorish because of the brick. It's got red brick. Now, when the old Royal Naval College was built, which is um, what is on the site of Greenwich Palace, uh, the, the old palace had sort of gone into disrepair and whatnot. And anyway, the bricks were used to build um, to build the observatories, which is why it has that Tudor look. So, so you can see that. So you could touch Tudor bricks, even though they're not where they were when the Tudors were around. Uh, if you go up to the National Observatory, uh, the sorry, the Royal Observatory, which of course is also where you can stand over the um, international date line, because Greenwich is zero, and you can stand on the line. Um, obviously, we have Greenwich Mean Time. When when we say London time, it's Greenwich Mean Time. So, and that's where you get it from. Uh, so the visitor centre would definitely do it. I'd do the Thames. I would go up and see the Royal Observatory. And when you're up there as well, you've got a fantastic view back down over the site um, and, and, and beyond as well. So anyway, so we did a room about that because, as you can tell, it's a very interesting um, place. That's before you start getting into the, the history of it becoming the old Royal Naval College um, or the Royal Naval College, I presume. You don't build something and it's old straight away. Anyway. Um, Monday we had the day off because it was bank holiday. You know, work on a Sunday, have bank holiday off. I get the irony. Um, and then, um, yeah, we didn't do one Wednesday morning. We normally do a Wednesday morning chill chat. But Wednesday evening, we've got this history after dark room. And this is where it gets a little bit spicy, perhaps. And we talk about things that are a little bit um, more, I don't know, funny, um, rude, whatever we go a little bit we go we go down more routes perhaps than we would in uh, in a daytime room it's very fun and last night we were talking history's hypocrites this was with myself Catherine Brooks who's the Tudor tracker and Kat Marchant who you might know uh, from reading the past on YouTube she's fabulous and we were talking about history's hypocrites um and <laughs> so we each put forward some hypocrites now mine um, mine threw me when I started doing a bit more research um, unfortunately not that long before the room it was Oliver Cromwell because Oliver Cromwell so Oliver Cromwell who became Lord Protector of um, of well England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland and Dominions I don't know owned by whatever whatever the term was um, now so it's termed the, the, the Republic, you know, we're a Republic, we were without a king for those 11 years in this interregnum. And actually, the trappings, the ceremonies, um, the setup was very monarchical. I, I, without looking into it, um, you know, any more than I already have, there isn't a fat lot. There just isn't a fat lot of difference. Um, so I think in a future clubhouse we may even um, discuss: Did we actually have a King Oliver in all but name, and therefore were we ever without a king? Um, the way he ruled was very similar. But this is how what people wanted him to do. By the way, this wasn't just him. So anyway, so I'd put him forward as a hypocrite because if you look at the uh, ceremony to instate him as Lord Protector. It wasn't at Westminster Abbey, it was at Westminster Hall, the great hall that's still there within the Houses of Parliament, but it was um, the, of Westminster Palace. It, it, was, it was sat on Edward I's coronation chair, so uh, and it was, it was given an, an orb and a scepter. So very, very similar. And um, the, his funeral was a massive affair massive state affair and, and he was he was buried at Westminster Abbey um the effigy of him because his, his body whatever he died of made his body swell and burst and bleh, do horrible things which meant you couldn't have him lying in state so they created a wax effigy and and dressed it in purple velvet and all these things ermine all these things that are 
you know, indicators of, uh, of, of, of royalty. Um, he was referred to as your highness. Um, so I was putting him forward as a hypocrite. And then I found out that he was never actually anti-monarchy. <laughs> he was very firmly anti-Charles I, not the monarchy as an institution in itself. Um, so on the face of it, very hypocritical. And then when I started looking into it, I was like, not actually quite sure if I can um, cover him as a hypocrite. However, isn't that interesting? I think that's interesting. Um, just uh, how, now he, he was very intolerant on religion. That was that was a that was a big point as well, um, but yeah, just how the, sh the English Civil War is so complicated, um, and they stop and they start and people change sides and and you've got all these different um, so people on the same sides were after slightly different outcomes and so it's so it's it is complex. So. Um, like most events in history, it's reduced. It's it's a it's it has to be made quick and easy, or it's made quick and easy to digest or put over or introduce people to. Um, and so Oliver Cromwell is put over as, um, yeah, he wants to head up a a, a non monarchical state, and yet that's exactly what he he, he just takes on the trappings and everything um which explains as well why the palaces uh that that weren't slighted by order were that he used were um were kept so that's why we, we um, so Whitehall Palace at that time obviously we don't have it now but survived Cromwell Windsor Castle survived Cromwell he 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 uh he liked Windsor so anyway he was interesting Cat put forward Thomas Wolsey um, uh, man of the church, but very, very, um, well, everything sumptuous in what he wore, what he did, how he entertained. He had wives. He had ch uh, no, not wives. That would that would have been official. He had mistresses. He had children. He did everything that he told everyone else not to do. No one, no one else like that. Um, Richard the Third. I'm looking now for anyone. I didn't put that one forward. Catherine put him forward. She did have very good uh, uh, reasoning for it. It's about his loyalty, how loyal he was to his brother Edward the Fourth in life, and then how um, how that loyalty didn't then continue to Edward's children, the princess in the tower. Um, and then, uh, but she did also, for balance, put forward Henry the Seventh as well. Um, and then I mentioned George Orwell because George Orwell, famous obviously for uh, speaking out against communism, writing the books um, 1984 and Animal Farm. Animal, Animal Farm I studied at uh, just at school, but um, we went into it in quite a lot of detail. Um, and it's obviously a mirror up to the the, the Soviet Union, how it, that would worked, and and communism there, um, and, and a big ad, yeah, he warned against the the Big Brother, the surveillance state, um, not being able to have freedom of ideas, um, having to think or at least show that you think in the same way as you're told to, um, and yet on some scale he actually fed into a British. Um, intelligence agency which was set up to well propaganda agency actually it was set up to to uh barbara not richard i knew I, that's i was waiting for you to say something barbara honey. <laughs> um um yeah so this this uh agency was set up to kind of to spread an anti-communist um message and and orwell actually fed into them people he suspected journalists writers um that he suspected may have communist sympathies. So um, it doesn't it go, you know, I want, this is the way everyone should do it, but there's a little time where I can't, I, I can't quite follow that because of 
something else so there is a hypocrisy and I think we basically concluded there was hypocrisy in everybody it's just that obviously it's highlighted if it's somebody famous uh, in history or pivot you know an important figure um, and what it actually is is pragmatism in and we can argue the toss about in in, in specific cases whether it's um, that or, or or out and out out and out hypocrisy and telling people to do one thing whilst doing something um, different yourself um, and you see it now we've seen it all the way through COVID haven't we people putting through rules and then we find out they haven't followed them themselves but 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 yeah it's whether it, are they full-on hypo- hi- hypocrites or is there a pragmatism um, in there so anyway that was really uh, interesting um topic last night next week in history after dark we're doing satire so basically how to how to take the um i'll i'll be i'll be um polite because we're not in the evening class the evening evening class the evening room uh but it won't be probably titled this but how to take the mickey in history the georgians i think are going to uh feature quite heavily there so there's a there's a, a a really good backstory as well that Kat's going to cover about how come we suddenly got this explosion of um, this satire, these cartoons that you, you've probably seen um, of the Georgians, especially like the Prince Regent, and and I mean they were badly behaved, but we suddenly got these a very very public show of disgust with how they um, how they act act acted, and. Um, we have a Instagram. We actually have an Instagram channel for both of these clubs. So you can, we've got two clubs on Clubhouse. One is called the Tudor History Club, which you can find on Instagram at the underscore Tudor underscore history underscore club. And the other one is the History and Culture Club, um, which we're trying to widen out to cover history across the world and cultures across the world. That's the idea for that club. It's going to grow. Um, and you can find that one on Instagram as well. So at history um what do I say history and culture club underscore and underscore culture underscore club but if you um yeah uh, but yeah so find those on Instagram because there we share photos or you know images um if they're pertinent to something we're talking about and if we've managed to get higher <laughs> get organized enough to do it so if um so like for Friday, for instance, we're talking about favourite portraits and the imagery, uh, st- the, the messages that came through in portraiture and why certain portraits were, um, oh, I've just thought of another idea of one to uh, hire James in Norwich, welcome. Um, I've just thought of another portrait that I want to cover on Friday, um, as I was thinking. Uh, so um, yes, so on those Instagram accounts, you can see some of the if, we, if we're sharing images that are pertinent to the discussion we'll be having on Clubhouse, you'll be able to see them there, whether you're able to join us on Clubhouse or or not. So Friday will be some portraiture. That will be in the, um, are we doing that in the History and Culture Club or the Tudor History Club? I can't remember. Follow both and you'll see. Um, and then, yeah, and then so next Wednesday we're doing um, satire. So you'll see some of the imagery um, that we'll be talking about for that as well. So that'll be fun. And then... On Sunday, in that Tudor, uh, the Travelling Tudor Britain room, Sarah, Deb Royal and myself are talking about Hatfield House, which I think some of you have been with me too. Mm. So, and uh, yeah, we'll be talking about Hatfield House because Hatfield House um, is where Elizabeth I was. Um, welcome, Rosella. Hi, Phil. Um, where, um, oh, Monica Chow, she's in Italy. That's, the, that's my sum total Italian that I will dare use in public. Regardless of how much I um, think I've learnt, I still, I still don't, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Just need to use it, don't I? Be a bit more. Uh, Jude's been yeah, Jude's been to Hatfield with me. We've got a photo to prove it. <laughs> so Hatfield is where Elizabeth I was when she discovered, or when she was told she was queen. And um, there's the oak there uh, that she uh, she was sat reading underneath, even though it was November. But you know, 
to be fair we get nice weather in november sometimes we get awful weather in may which is what we're having at the moment although it's sunny today it hailed on me yesterday i went out for a bike ride with my daughter and it hailed on me we had to come back because our hands hurt we hadn't gone out ready for hail on the 5th of may anyway so yeah so we'll be talking about hatfield house talking about the oak how to find it um (laughs) uh And then there's the Great Hall still there where Elizabeth held her first council meeting. But if you imagine it was like um, a a Tudor layout of a a building in a kind of with a courtyard in the middle, three sides of it no longer exist. They were, well, they were wiped away and rebuilt in the time of James the first of England, sixth of Scotland. So um, it's, it's very old, what is there, but it's not exactly what Elizabeth would have would have known but she would have known the remaining uh, part so it's and it's a fabulous place to go um for its history anyway so we'll be talking about Hatfield House and then Monday um in the Tudor History Club we're talking about the men involved in the downfall of Anne Boleyn um it's it's one of those things because it was Anne Oh, Monica's been to Hatfield as well. Isn't it amazing? And it's got a lovely courtyard with little shops, independent shops there as well, which is nice. And you can go there. You can go to the shops without having to go into the house as well if you wanted to just drop off there for a coffee and to buy a plant or something. I can't remember what they sell there. Uh, So, yeah, Monday we're going to be talking about the men who were taken down with Anne. Um, The five men executed um for supposedly committing adultery with Anne um and uh Monica says I remember the shop with a kind of a kind of pained face I'm gonna assume you managed to spend a lot of money (laughs) in the shop with that face (laughs) um so yeah uh yeah the men so five men were executed they they were all executed up on tower hill and um when we do the anne boleyn experience tour any of the tours that go to the tower of london actually i'll see she spent too much (laughs) yeah she told me um uh when yeah when whenever we do a tour that goes to the tower of london we always go or we offer for people to walk up with us to go to the um the scaffold site on tower hill That's different to the site where Anne Boleyn was executed. Um, The one on Tower Hill was a, it was a permanent site of execution. I'm not overly sure without doing uh, more reading whether the actual scaffold itself was, um, was the exact same one all the time. It could have moved around and and whatever, but, uh, but certainly the site was, was, was permanent. Whereas, the reason um, there was confusion as to where Anne was executed within the tower is because there was no permanent scaffold site, no permanent execution site within the Tower of London. And that glass memorial that you might have seen with the pillow, um, people get very agitated about where that is. But the reality is it's not just for Anne. It's for everybody who was executed within the Tower of London, and there were there were there were many, obviously nowhere near as many as the public executions on uh, on Tower Hill, but um, but there were many. So that that's a monument to them to them all, and that's why it's not in. Oh, sorry, and and, and the different forms of execution as well over time. Um, and so not everyone who died within the Tower of London was um, was beheaded so there wasn't a scaffold and uh, in, and it might have been a different place each time hence why the um yeah the monument is is where it is and it doesn't try to be in the exact spot of Anne's execution it's not just for Anne when um I've got a video on god is it Facebook or YouTube hopefully it's both which I've it was quite it's quite shortish. I might have even put it in with another one, but it's the it's the route that Anne would have taken on the morning of her execution. Um, so uh, you can you can have a look at that if you're interested. I've got quite a few videos about Anne. Um, one of the videos that's available now that I hadn't got out last time. I think I told you I was doing the countdown. The the down the, like 
charting the downfall of Anne Boleyn part one <laughs> was last week part two is now available so you can find that but you can also find the procession route um and uh there's some myth busting about Anne Boleyn at the tower with Claire Ridgeway um so yeah some some quite cool things and I've if you're a patron of mine then um over on Patreon dot com forward slash British history today you will be receiving my blog about Anne so I'm just doing the uh, finishing the final read through of that um and uh, and that will be available to you later on um you've also already got uh access to my next video um for everyone else that'll be live on the 8th so in two days time Saturday uh on VE day what is VE day um what it isn't as well um so I've, I've covered like um it was really the start of the of the end it, uh, yeah would I put it that way because we still had um uh, the, it, it was the end of the fighting in in Europe but there was still fighting going on in Japan and it was the beginning of some really tough austerity um times of austerity and i talk about the rationing and things so that will be available on the 8th if you're a patron then that's already available to you now just hop on um go along to patreon um on your app or on your desktop and you will find that already the link um what else have i been doing oh i might as well show you this as well oh yeah so that video i was just saying about the one the procession route for anne for her execution I thought I could probably have a go at showing you, perhaps. So this is the um, Tower of London guidebook, <laughs> if you can see it. So now where Anne was kept before her execution is the same apartments that, that were built um, and were dated for her before her um, coronation in 1533. The, the place of her trial was the Great Hall within the Tower of London. Neither of these places um, now exist. Sorry, I'm going to try and read Amanda's comment. I heard Queen Victoria asked where Anne was executed. The guard didn't know, but didn't want the Queen to know he didn't know. So just pointed to any spot that was the spot where the Victorian memorial was placed. <laughs> yes. Well, Victoria was the one who insisted on a memorial being created Yes, absolutely. And in fact, I'll show you something else in a moment that you'll be interested in. Um, and it's it's an older it's an older guidebook from the Tower of London, so I'll show you. But yes, yeah, so the, the royal apartments where Anne was kept um during her imprisonment in the tower no longer exist. And the great hall where she uh, and her brother were tried no longer exists. And actually the route that she walked, you can't walk now because um it's it's uh it's where the ravens are kept <laughs> what part of it is and it and she went through a gate that no longer exists um so she basically i don't know if i'll be able to do this. so so if you get your bearings this is the the thames down here sorry for those of you on the podcast bear with me a little bit um and the royal apartments were you, you got the white tower in the middle and the royal apartments were here they were here where this big tree is now or where the big tree is shown on the map and the great hall was was along the side there where the ravens are now she would have come out of the apartments past the great hall up through here which was a gate so the um where are we the western side of the white tower in the middle and the execution site was somewhere between the north side of the white tower and what is now the waterloo barracks so that's about where she was um she was executed now and I've got that video to to show you. I was on the tower walls, um, pointing it out. But this, you know how I am for. I love follow on history. This is what I would call follow on history type thing. So you've got a guidebook for the Tower of London, which was written in. I shall tell you. It was published in. I know I've seen it somewhere. Nineteen. Well, first published 1953, but this is a 1977 edition. Now, what's really, well, there's loads of interesting things in it, but in the back is, and I'll have to try and fold it out, is, is their visitor's map. 
of the Tower of London. Now, it's actually a little bit better, I'm sorry to say, than the modern one to show you. Hi, Lenore. Hi, Geraldine. Thank you for joining. I'm just showing people uh, the Tower of London where um, the, the locations that are pertinent to Anne Boleyn's execution. Um, and this is a 1977 uh, Tower of London guidebook. So in the back, it has this this fold out map um right let me see if i can manage this it's actually got you can see here cold harbour gate sorry yes cold harbour gate that's what they've called it there i think it's coal harbour gate but anyway it's 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 that tip. oh barbara's got one of these awesome you can get it out get it out and have a look it's so dope um so she would have walked up through that gate now here if you can see it says site of block. And I think that's um, what Amanda's referring to. Basically, Queen Victoria decided, uh, she did quite a bit actually, because she she's the one who, um, uh, as far as I remember, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Queen Victoria who, who went into St. Peter Ad Vincula and said, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, the floor was just all over the place because they just built, they just buried people under the floor who'd been executed and whatever so um I know she's the one who insisted on there being a uh, a monument so that is probably why we have the monument where it is because it's probably where that yeoman warder said oh there your majesty it was there i definitely know where it happened and he didn't of course uh because that wasn't revealed until much much later on but i love this i love this book um it tells you quite a bit about the uh, the armory and uh, and things like that. Anyway, I'll get waylaid. What are we on? Forty one minutes. Thank you for sticking with me, everybody. <laughs> my me and my Thursday tea time history history chats and rants and diatribes. Um, so what else have I got going on? So I've told you about. So I've got the, so you've got the charting of the downfall of Anne Boleyn uh, on YouTube, which anyone can watch at the moment. I've got the blog for my patrons that will be out later today. Um, also for um, my patrons on the nineteenth, I will be doing a live from the Tower of London. So um, that week, the twentieth, I won't be doing a Thursday tea time live because I'll still be in London, and I'm going to. Um, be there getting a lot of filming and and such like done however one thing I'll, I'll say is I if I can I will be going live from um to cover the um hi Soledad to cover the Elizabeth I statue which I spoke about a couple of weeks ago where I ventured into the topic of statues and I spoke about the Elizabeth I statue on uh, Fleet Street if I can um, if you know if the traffic's not too loud and whatever, I am going to go live on i um, on Instagram from there. So I don't know what time that will be. Um, so I won't be doing a Thursday tea time live, but at some point during that Thursday, um, yeah, probably the Thursday, I will be doing something. I hope from the Elizabeth I statue because I want to show you where it is because it's so hidden. As you'll know if you were watching me a couple of weeks ago and I was talking about it. Um, there's another couple of videos that have gone live as well since I last spoke to you. The Act of Union 1707. So this is the, it was actually two Acts of Union because one had to be read out in the Scottish Parliament. This was this was the act of, that actually finally brought um, Scotland and the rest of Britain together, uh, which is why we have all these different names for us because it was the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and then you've got the, all the individual uh, countries inside of that. Um, but that was 1707. That was under the final Stuart monarch, Anne, Queen Anne. Um, so I've got a video about that and a video about the Battle of Tewkesbury in 1471. So those are all available now and they're available on the podcast as well, which is just the audio version of, uh, of the video. So you get everything except the pictures I share. <laughs> um, uh, and YouTube members, um, remember, you've actually got access now to a uh, the this month's long form historian interview, which is the Matt Lewis interview from um, Ludlow Castle, where he's talking about this. This is 
this 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 links to um, Battle of Tewkesbury anyway and Wars of the Roses because Ludlow Castle was just such a pivotal castle in in that at that that time period, um, and he talks about. Um, loads of stuff to do with Ludlow Castle, why it's where it is, how it was so um, interesting. Uh, Jude bought a tower guide in the 1970s whilst on a school trip. Oh, it might be the same one. It might be the same one. She doesn't know where it went. That's the thing, isn't it? Put things away for safekeeping and then, and then can't find them again. Um yeah, so Matt's talking about Lillo Castle, the how pivotal, but he also mentioned a few events and one of them, and I, I can't remember off the top of my head, you'll have to watch the interview. Uh, patrons, you've already got it as well, available on Patreon, um, where they can actually place um, the the Duke of York, is it Cecily, and Edward, so who would become Edward IV, um, uh uh, Edmund, I'm not sure if he was still alive at that point. Duke of Clarence, and and a young, I think Richard III would have been about ten. Obviously, he wasn't Richard III at that point. Um, he would have been about ten, and they were all at Ludlow at the same time. Um, so it's it's I think it's the only time where they could pin them all in. You know, we know they were definitely all in the same place, and you can and obviously, and we're sat there in, in this space while Matt's talking to us. So it's it's a really fabulous um, fabulous chat with him. So. Um, if you're on YouTube, you've got it. If you're on Patreon, you, you've you've got it now. Um, but as a free video, this is the Battle of Cheeksbury, 1471. And the Battle of Cheeksbury, um, it was kind of the it was it was one of the one of the final battles. So I suppose you've got Battle of Bosworth that in 1485 they say right, it's done. We've Richard's gone. We've got Henry the Seventh. The Tudors begin. Ah, oh, we don't have any civil war after that. But the Battle of Cheeksbury was. Um, was also a final battle in the Horse of the Roses because this was the one that put Edward IV back on the throne. So we went, we went, um, Henry, which way did it go? Yeah, Henry VI, Edward IV, Henry VI again, Edward IV. And this is the Battle of Tewkesbury that meant that Edward IV came back to the throne and he was on the throne till his death. And it's the Battle of Tewkesbury where the where um, Edward, Prince of Wales, Henry VI's son, only son, uh, was killed. He's buried at Tewkesbury, um, and uh, he's he's buried in the choir at Tewkesbury, um, underneath where Edward the Fourth decided to put the Sons in Splendour emblem of the House of York, right above where he's lying. That's nice, isn't it? Duke of Clarence is also buried. Um, yeah, the one who was supposed to have been. Uh, executed by being drowned in a vat of Malmsey wine at the Tower of London and then taken up to Tewkesbury, pickled, uh, to be buried. Uh, and the Battle of Tewkesbury, oh, I mean, obviously it's not happened last year, it's not happening this year, I know it's a virtual event, but they do a medieval festival. Um, hi Mike, thanks for joining. Uh, they do a medieval festival at Tewkesbury where they there's a reenactment of the battle. And actually in the video, I've... Um, shared photos of that reenactment um from when i went to it a few years ago so hopefully 2022 and that'll be on again because it's really fun it's really fun because not only do they do a battle reenactment but that you know they 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 have a whole village set up um as if they were they were actually there for battle and it's it's really interesting and they'll talk the people who are there will talk to you about everything from what they're wearing to what they're eating to how they're sleeping they'll probably tell you how they're going to the loo if you're interested some people are. Oh, mm. So anyway, that video is on there as well. So please do go and check them out. Like I say, if you can um, obviously like, the, if, you, if you like the videos, please like them. But if you comment on them as well, I think that like really shoves it up. Um, <laughs> Doug says, what's Malmsey wine? I don't know. It's a, supposed to be, isn't it? Like a sweet. Um, I don't think we have have anything like it now. I don't know whether it's like a port. Not sure. I might have that totally wrong. If anyone knows what Malmsey wine is, please do feel free to tell us. And why would you want to waste a whole vat of it? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so I've told you that Thursday 20th. So I'll be here I'll be here next week for Thursday Tea Time Live. But the week after, you'll probably just have to try and catch me on Instagram Live because I'm going to be out and about in London um, doing some 
than filming, but I will try and bring you that Elizabeth I statue. If I don't do it live, I will um I will upload a video of it because I'm I'm definitely going to go and, and find that so that I can uh, I can show you. But yeah, so I'm going to be um in London. I'm going to be at the tower on the 19th. I should have been there on a tour. Now I don't really talk about my tours much on these Thursday tea time lives. It's not really been um it's not been something I've been doing for uh, for the past year, and unfortunately, um, not until at least September this year um, either, which is really really sad. So I should have been there on a tour. Um, Jude um, would have been with us. Um, um, so actually, I don't know, Jude, if you if you were thinking of being in London around then as well. If you are, then uh, I shall uh, see you there. Um, yeah, so anyway, and I was re oh, right next week. So I've bought myself something ready to go to the tower. Um, and I was, I was, I got a text, you know, you get a text now to say your delivery man is on his way. And, uh, and, and the delivery came and it was something else I delivered. I was gutted because I really wanted to show you today. So I don't know whether to tell you what it is or whether I'll leave it as a surprise for next week. I'll leave it as a surprise for next week. Uh, yeah. Hello, good. Keeping surprises. So, um, I think that's it. Just to let um, patrons know, yeah, so you've got the blog on Amberlynn coming up, and we've got an interview with <laughs> Colleen says tell. <laughs> Colleen, do you not like surprises? <laughs> you like my son. I don't want to surprise. I want you to tell me. So, oh, okay, okay. I'll tell you, and then you can go and check it out as well but I'll show it you in real life next week. Okay. So because I've got to go on trains and et cetera, I'm not overly jazzed, but I do have to get a mask. So I do sell them. So to be fair, um, now you can find my shop on my website. Now I've updated my website yesterday. So you can go to britishhistorytours.com and click on shop and you can see all the stuff. Anyway, there's Anne Boleyn range. Um, and it's the B necklace, you know, that fabulous, um, iconic bee necklace with the three pearls hanging down from it and it's on a pearl chain so that design and um, my daughter actually drew it and I've got a mask with it on and I've got a phone case so I'm going to be able to show you all those things but if you have a look on my website um, the links are there through to the shop and uh, and you can see it there's actually there's a pair there's a pair of leggings I, I did I put a pair of leggings on with bee as well so if there's any Anne Boleyn fitness uh also that are fitness fans then uh, then you might like those but yeah I'll show I'll sh I'll be able to show you them in real life next week um yeah really wanted to be able to show you this week but I'll show you next week fabulous well thank you everyone thank you for joining me um and uh I will be here this time next week so one o'clock London time or Greenwich Mean Time we now know where that comes from uh and we'll cover more history things that have been going on in the week I will fill you in on what we've been chatting about on um, Clubhouse in case you can't make it there um, if you um, can look me up I'm at Philippa B on Clubhouse so I'd love you to come and follow us we uh, there's me um, Sarah Morris who's the Tudor Travel Guide Catherine Brooks who's the Tudor Travel Tracker uh, sorry, the Tudor Tracker I'm <laughs> getting all mixed up and uh, Kat Marchant who's Dr Kat Marchant and, and Reading the Past on, on YouTube um, and Instagram and we have the Instagram profiles for, for our clubs on there so we've got the History and Culture Club and the Tudor History Club um, and on those Instagram um, uh profiles you will see some of the images and, and things like that that uh, that we use to refer to if we're doing a chat where we'd like people to be able to see stuff because <laughs> there's it's just talking on clubhouse there's no images other than, than your little profile picture um, it's all live as well so there's no recording there's no leaving comments you, you listen in you can come up to stage and speak and say hi if you want um or you can just stay in the audience and listen but it's all live no recording no I mean, I think they, they might become a way of recording in the not too distant future. I think people do it now via apps and, and external apps and things like that. But it's a bit faffy at the moment. Um, but for now, it's it's all live, which I quite like, actually, to be, to be honest. Unless you've had a really cracking discussion and you're like, mm, really wish I'd recorded that. Um, but anyway, I will fill you in next week on what we've been talking about on there. 
I will let you know what uh, new videos I've got out on YouTube, what topics and what are, are about to come out. And I will remind you that the week after I will be in London, London town, doing some filming and um and patrons, like I say, you will see me live from the tower on the 19th of May for a special. But for now, I will let you all go and enjoy your day. Um, and um, maybe I'll catch you on YouTube, Facebook or Instagram or Clubhouse indeed in the meantime. But if I don't, have a lovely, safe and happy week. And I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.